Now let us understand the balancing of radial engine. So radial engine is will be balanced by direct and reverse crank methods. Uh, what is radial engine? So <coughs> radial engine, uh, the cylinders, for example, if this is the if this is the common crank, if this is the common crank, the cylinders are placed radially. For example, one of the cylinder is placed here. Uh, one of the cylinder is placed here and one of the cylinder is placed here. So the connecting rod of each of these cylinders will be connected to this common crankshaft. Okay, so this arrange this type of cylinders are what are known as radial engines. So such radial engines uh, are balanced by direct and reverse crank methods. In case of a radial engine, so all the cylinders are placed in only one plane. So cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three. So all these three cylinders are placed in one plane. So, because all the cylinders, did not it is not you know not necessarily only three cylinders. It can be more than three also. Uh, because all the cylinders are placed in only one plane, you will see only primary unbalanced force and secondary unbalanced force. Primary unbalanced force and secondary unbalanced force. You will not see primary uh, and secondary couples. So why you will not see primary and secondary couples? Because all the forces are acting in only one plane. There is no question of formation of the couple. Couple will not be formed. So, you will have to find only primary unbalanced force and secondary unbalanced force in case of uh, radial engine by the method of direct and reverse crank methods. Oh, what is direct and reverse crank methods? So, let us understand what are such, uh, such direct and reverse crank methods uh, by primary forces and by secondary forces. Now, let us try to find out primary forces using direct and reverse crank methods. Now let us consider one of the cylinder, one of the cylinder let us consider. So this is the piston of one of the cylinder, connecting rod, common crankshaft. This is the common crankshaft. Now let M be the mass of the reciprocating parts. So such mass of the reciprocating parts will be transferred to the crank pin in case of reciprocating, balancing of reciprocating masses. This is the basic concept. Now here, instead of transferring the mass M completely onto the direct crank, so here we are assuming direct crank and reverse crank. So we are placing the direct crank OC at an angle of theta like this and reverse crank is placed at an angle of same theta. So this is the line of stroke, this is theta, you can consider this as say minus theta. Uh, same, same angle, this and this are same angle but it is in the opposite direction. And we assume that and this, this crank is what is known as direct crank. This is what is known as reverse crank or imaginary crank. Sorry, reverse crank or indirect crank. Direct crank, indirect crank or reverse crank. Now, the direct crank is rotating in the clockwise direction. A reverse crank, reverse crank or indirect crank is rotating in the opposite direction. The mass M is splitted into two. So half of the mass is placed at the direct crank pin and half of the mass is placed at the reverse crank pin. Now you, you can just imagine we, we, we have some mirror here, mirror here. If this crank is rotated in the clockwise direction, the mirror image of the same will be rotated in the opposite direction. No, the same way you can assume here. Now because of the mass placed at the crank pin C, that is at the direct crank, the centrifugal force, the horizontal component of that will be equal to primary direct crank, the force due to the force, uh, centrifugal force due to primary direct crank, that is F P D C equal to M by 2 times omega square or cos theta. So please remember we are, we are writing only the horizontal component of the centrifugal force produced by the mass placed at the direct crank. So mass placed at the direct crank is M by 2. Similarly, so we also placed half of the mass at the reverse crank that will also produce centrifugal force that is equal to half of, again, half of uh, m omega square or cos theta. That is the horizontal component of the centrifugal force produced due to the mass placed at the uh, reverse crank C dash. Now, half of the mass placed at, at this point, half remaining half, is, half of the mass is placed at this point, then the total centrifugal force will be the product of uh, this and this. That is, there are two centrifugal forces, there are two centrifugal forces of each magnitude equal to this then the total primary force will be equal to m omega square or cos theta. Now, you, you may have one question. 
what is that if you place a mass m at this point this will have two components not one component you have considered only horizontal component of this this force where is the vertical component yes we need to consider vertical component also if you consider vertical component like this this vertical component will be m by 2 omega square r sin theta this also will produce vertical component downward this also will be equal to m by 2 omega square r sin theta so this m omega square r sin theta m omega square m by 2 omega square sin theta m by 2 omega square sin theta are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction so this force and this force will get balance each other so no need to consider those forces so the unbalanced force will be only the horizontal component that is acting along the line of stroke so these forces which are acting perpendicular to the line of stroke equal in magnitude opposite in direction so they will get balanced each other so this is the concept of balancing of uh, you know method of finding out the primary forces in case of uh, radial engine so similarly let us come to the secondary forces how secondary forces are calculated now please remember so this is the equation to find out the unbalanced secondary forces in case of reciprocating engine m times 2 omega square. this is the modified equation actually it is m omega square r cos 2 theta by n this is the modified form of the same if you simplify you will get the same format m 2 omega square whole square 2 omega whole square r by 4 n cos 2 theta now here what we are trying to do that m be the mass of the reciprocating mass of the uh, uh, reciprocating parts of the engine that same mass that mass is splitted into half of the masses that is m by 2 you place at this point m by 2 you place at this point the radius of the crank earlier it was r it is r but here the radius of the crank is r by 4n that is the difference earlier the angular position of the crank direct crank angular position of the direct crank was theta from the line of stroke here angular position of the crank direct crank from the line of stroke is 2 theta because of this 2 theta earlier the crank was rotating with an angular velocity of omega in the clockwise direction here the direct crank is rotating twice the angular velocity that is 2 omega in the clockwise direction now reverse crank the same thing so reverse crank is the just exact mirror image of the direct crank so this will be if this is inclined at theta with line of stroke and this will be inclined the same angle theta same angle to theta but in the opposite direction so radius will be same radius cannot be different and if this is rotating in the clockwise direction so this must rotate in the anti clockwise direction now you know the components of uh, components of the centrifugal forces will be similar to this and this then finally uh, the product of those two will give you Uh, uh give you the equation equal to fs is equal to m2 omega square r by 4n cos 2 theta after simplification you will get m omega square r cos 2 theta by n so this is what is uh, you know this is the method used to find out unbalanced secondary forces in case of radial engine uh, by the method of direct and reverse cranks so next we will we will see one numerical example based on this concept so that you will will understand more uh more clearly